In the previous couple of episodes, we looked into securing our application by allowing only authenticated users to access certain areas. In this episode, we are going to secure our application even further by controlling what actions a specific user can do or can do. In other words, in this episode, we are going to look into authorization in Laravel applications. So in Laravel, there are mainly two ways to authorize user actions. First, using gates and second, using policies. Gates provide a simple closure-based approach while policies wrap the logic around a certain resource in a specific class. So let's start with gates. Every fresh Laravel application ships with an auth service provider. Inside this provider, we may register our gates and policies. Let's start by registering our first gate. And we do that inside the put method of the provider. To get started, we are going to use the gate facade and call the define method. This method accepts two arguments. The first argument is the name of the appellate. So let's create an appellate called view post. And for the second argument, we are going to provide a closure and this closure will receive two arguments. First, the user instance and second, a post instance. Inside this closure, we should return true or false. In our case, we only want to allow the post owner to preview it. And to do that, we're going to return user ID and we make sure it matches the post user ID. Perfect. And now the gate is defined. Let's go ahead and use it in our route. So we'll go to the API.php route. And we have a route defined here already. I did it before recording this video. And the route has a URL of posts slash post ID and it returns the post. So let's verify first that this route works fine. We'll go to our HTTP client and send the get request to the API slash posts slash one. And we can see that the post with ID one was returned and we can see that this post has or belongs to user ID one. If we visit post with ID number two, we can see the post returned as well, but this post belongs to a user with ID two. We are currently logged in with a sanctum token. So you see the header here. We are logged in with a sanctum token that belongs to the user with ID one. So with the gate that we defined, this user should only be able to preview the post with ID one because it belongs to them, but they can't preview post with ID two. To do that, we are going to make use of the gate we just defined. So inside the closure here, we're going to start an if condition and then use the gate facade and call the allows method. We will provide the ability name to the allows method, which in our case was view post. And then we will provide the post object. What we want to say here is that if the gate doesn't allow the user to view this post, we should apport with status code 403. 403. Now let's go to insomnia and view post with ID one. And we can see it. Now let's view post with ID two. And here we go. We receive a 403 response. Now, instead of negating the allows method, we can use the denies method. So if the gate denies access, the user should receive 403. Let's make sure that it works and it works if we visit post with ID one and it allows us to visit it. Perfect. So besides the allows and denies methods, the gate also has an authorize method. And this method will throw an authorization exception in case the check fails. Laravel will automatically catch this exception and convert it to a 403 response. So instead of using an if condition, we can just use the authorize method here. Authorize. And that's it. So let's make sure that it works. One and it works. So let's visit post with ID two and then it doesn't work. 403 response and the message says this action is unauthorized. And that's how we control what actions a specific user is allowed to do. But you can see that defining all gates inside the auth service provider can become really messy really quick. 
and for that reason laravel allows us to define policy classes that the framework will use to know how to authorize any of the users in your application depends on the abilities that you define inside the policy check this out let's go to the terminal and create our first policy we're going to call sale artisan make policy we will call our policy post policy because it controls the abilities or the actions that we want to allow or deny for users around the post resource. Now let's go back to PHP Storm and check the post policy class that was just created. By default it has a construct method but we won't need it in our example application here so let's remove it and then add a view method instead. So a function called view and this method will accept a user instance at the first argument and a post instance as the second argument. Inside this method, we are going to add our logic for the check. So we're going to return user ID matches the post user ID. Now that we have the policy in place, let's remove the closure paste gate definition from the OS service provider. So let's go here and remove the gate definition now inside the policy class the method for the view ability is called view so we should go to the api.php file and update the name of the ability from view post to just view now let's go to our http client and make sure that everything works let's visit the post with id1 and it works now let's visit post with id2 and we receive 403 so our policy works Laravel automatically discovers policies as long as the model name and policy name follow standard Laravel naming conventions. In our case, because the model is called post and the policy is called post policy, and the policy class is located under app policies post policy, Laravel was able to detect that this policy handles authorization for the post model. If you want custom naming, you may register your policies manually inside the auth service provider. There is a policies property here that you can use. So here we can remove this and assign that the post model is governed by the post policy. As for me, I prefer to follow the framework conventions. That way I won't have to register the policies manually each and every single time I want to add a new policy and for future Laravel developers who are going to work on this application they will be able to figure things out easily because I am following the convention. Now that we have this policy check in place we can follow the same steps to add policy checks to update posts and to delete posts and any action actually. But uh, what about actions that doesn't affect a specific post or a specific resource, like how to authorize users to create a new post? Let me show you how to do that. First, let's create a new route, so api.php, and then we are going to copy this and create a new route here. This route is going to use the post HTTP method, and it's just going to be slash posts. It also won't accept a post instance here. This route will be used to create new posts. Inside the route, let's just return OK for now. Now let's go to the HTTP client and send a post request to API posts. Click send and we receive OK. So the route works. Now we want to control which users are allowed to create a post. To do that, let's define a policy method called create. So we will go to our post policy and define a new method called create. This method will only accept a single argument for the current logged in user. Inside the method, we may implement any business logic, like only allow a user with admin access to create posts. But for our example, we will just return true to allow all users to create posts. So return true. Now let's go back to the api.php file and then add the gate check in place. For that we are going to use the gate facade as well and then call authorize and for the ability you are going to use create. Now in this route we had to provide the post instance. This way Laravel was able to match the post policy to the post resource that we passed because they match the same type. 
but in our case here we don't have any post instance to pass and for that we are going to pass the class name instead so post class now let's try hitting that out in the http client and it works it returns ok but if we go to the post policy and update the check to return false so it denies creating posts to all users and we go back to the http client and send the request we are now getting 403 because the gate prevented us and that's what we expect now if we check the error message that's returned from the application we can see that it is this action is unauthorized this is okay for most cases but sometimes you wish to return a custom message for some of your authorization checks to do that let's go to the policy method and instead of returning false we are going to return a response so here we are going to return a response and we are looking for the one under illuminate auth access here and then we are going to call the deny method this method accepts a string at the first argument and we will provide the message here let's say you must be an admin now if we go and hit this route again we can see that the message we received is you must be an admin which is the custom message that we provided so now we have learned how to define and perform authorization checks in our Laravel applications but the authorization component over much more than what we explained in this video so go ahead and check the documentation at the Laravel official documentation website I will leave a link in the description down below and that's it for this video I hope you learned something and see you in the next video